Hey guys, Dr. Chris Heimlich here, and today we're going to be talking about the number one reason why you can still have symptoms related to your low thyroid even though you're taking medications. Almost all the patients who come into our office uh, looking for help uh, with their thyroid have already started taking thyroid medications. And the majority of the time, that's because they need it. And the reason they need it is because their body is being attacked, their thyroid is being attacked and destroyed, so it can't produce enough of the hormone that it's supposed to produce. So the thyroid medication, even though it's beneficial because it helps to replace what their body can no longer produce, it does nothing to slow down the attack on that thyroid itself, which is the main problem. So it's very common. So I'll also have people ask me, hey, can I get off my medication once we get my body to heal itself back up? Probably not. And I also ask them, like, was that your goal is to get off medication or is your goal to not have any symptomatology? You know, invariably it's like, well, I don't want to have any symptoms. Exactly. And I'll have some people like, oh, I'm so anti-medication. Yeah, okay. But medication is necessary sometimes. There's a very few that don't have to have, take a medication, but those are few and far between. But what we're talking about now is the number one reason why you still have those symptoms. And that number, that reason rather, is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, in the symptoms of underactive thyroid um, are huge uh, and, and really decrease the quality of a person's life. And there's millions of people out there right now that have Hashimoto's that don't even realize it. Now, how do you, how do you know if you have it? Well, the way you know you have it is you go in and you talk to your, uh, or, or talk to a healthcare physician that understands that you can still have these symptoms of hypo and hyperthyroid. You can have blood sugar adrenal issues. You can have uh, gastrointestinal issues. You can have all these different type of things which can mean that you have the Hashimoto's. You can also get a thyroid antibody test done. There's two of them you can get done to see if you have it. About 82% of the time, it'll catch it. The other 18% of the time, it won't catch it. So you could actually have Hashimoto's. It's called seronegative Hashimoto's, but your blood test wouldn't show it, even though you have all the signs and symptoms of it. So you have to talk with a, a doc that understands that, who's going to do an examination on you and make sure they take a look and correlate your total blood work, not just thyroid blood work, but all of your blood work with your symptomatology and correlate that also with how you're feeling because that makes, makes a big difference. And remember, the thyroid hormone you're taking does nothing to slow down that attack on your body. Your body's going to continue getting attacked when you're taking that thyroid hormone, even if it makes you feel a bit better. Now, when the body gets attacked by this, um, you can have a decrease in B12 absorption in your body. It could cause a pernicious anemia because it's attacking the stomach. It can attack the gastrointestinal system, you know, which most people call their, their tummy, but the low intestines. Uh, guess what? That's where we get 80% of our neurotransmitters created. So you can get brain fog. You can be uh, uh, not quite as sharp as what you should be. You can be depressed. You can even have anxiety. There's a lot of different things that go along with that. Also, the health of the brain has a direct correlation with that because of those neurotransmitters. So we always recommend to have your, have your functional brain test done as well. Now what's a functional brain test? Basically that's where you go to functional neurologist and they take a look to make sure, hey, are you balanced from one side to the other? Because the brain talks directly as well as indirectly to the thyroid as well. It, it's connected all in through there. So what takes care of all the different autonomic or automatic stuff going on in our body? The brain. So it's pretty important to the health of it. Make sure it doesn't have any type of inflammation. Make sure it doesn't have any dysregulation of any sugars, anemias, or anything else. That does not mean brain tumor. That's, that's a hard lesion. That's something different. And if you had something like that, more than likely your health care uh, providers would have already ruled that type of thing out for you. We're talking about what they call functional lesions or functional disassociation where it just doesn't talk in the way it's supposed to. Be like saying, hey, my right side of my... Uh, my right quadriceps a little bit stronger than my left quadriceps. Is that going to kill you? No. But as you run and do more exercise, it's going to cause some imbalances going on in your body. It's not going to give you optimal health. So those are things that you should get checked out too. Uh, your adrenals get checked out. 
check out your immune system, obviously, because it's your body attacking itself. That's a dysregulation of the immune system or maybe an active antigen type of pattern going on, too. Now, you shouldn't have to know what these are. You shouldn't have to look them up. Quite honestly, you shouldn't... I don't think you should have to be watching my video right now. I think that uh, it's the responsibility of doctors to know this information and know how to treat patients and know how to help them heal their bodies up. So all this time that you've been spending on the internet looking and searching for answers, unfortunately I don't feel that you should, have, you should really have to do those type of things. Of course I'm on here on the internet to, to inform and to help people out, but you should be able to go to a physician and have them tell you this type of stuff and check you out, do a good examination, do a thorough blood work, do a great history and listen to what you have to say and figure out how your body is not functioning the way it should and figure out what to do to get your body to help itself out. So the functional approach naturally is going to help modulating the immune system, get your body to do what it's supposed to do. And that's functional at optimal levels, not to attack itself. So what you need to do if you're, if you're having this type of problem, and there's millions of people out there that are having this problem and have no idea whatsoever, or a loved one has this type of thing, don't, don't let them suffer anymore. Uh, find someone who knows what we've talked about, who knows how to take a look at these type of things to get, get your blood work done and get an examination and figure out what you need to do in order to get your body to do what it's designed to, and that's heal itself back up. I'm Dr. Heimlich. Thanks for listening.